Hi, I'm Jeff Crawford from Crawford's Auto in Mesa, Arizona. Welcome to our free lessons on basic automotive maintenance and repair. This lesson is going to be on the electrical system and the ignition system of the vehicle. By ignition system, I mean the ignition for the air fuel mixture in the cylinders, not the ignition that you put your key into to start the car. We'll start out with the electrical system. The heart of the electrical system on any vehicle is going to be the, the battery. The battery is the source of its uh, source of energy, electrical energy, to power the whole vehicle. It starts the vehicle, it powers your power windows, your headlights, your ignition system, which we're going to go into in a little more detail. So basically, this is a, a, the battery, and it's the power supply for the whole vehicle. Now right next to the battery on this vehicle, which this is a 1997 Ford Mustang, we have the alternator. The alternator's job is to maintain the charge level in the battery. So if the battery gets low or you have a high usage headlights on, air conditioning on, this alternator is going to produce electricity to keep the battery charged. The alternator is not designed to operate without a battery. The battery absorbs the energy from the alternator and the battery is the power source for the whole vehicle. Next we're going to move on to the ignition system. Again the ignition system is the electrical system that's used to ignite the air fuel mixture inside the combustion chamber of an internal combustion engine. Um, we, we've done a lesson on the internal combustion engine on a different video. You can watch that if you'd like. We'll start out over here with this is an older style ignition system. This uses a distributor to fire the... So here this part will be rotating. Underneath here we have a rotor. This is an ignition rotor. Underneath here we have a high voltage lead. So the, this is going to conduct the high voltage electricity to this. Wherever this rotor is pointing inside the cap, you'll notice there are contacts. There are eight. This is out of an eight cylinder Chevrolet engine. Where, whichever direction the rotor is pointing determines which cylinder it's firing. There are eight contacts inside here. So as this rotates, it's going to go through the firing order. One, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two, and then back to number one. So the engine fires in that order. In other words, one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. It fires in that order as it fires. This is a, a demonstration of how the cylinders are numbered on this particular vehicle. It's one, three, five, and seven, two, four, six, and eight. This varies on all engines, and you'd need to look up your firing order to know how to correctly wire it. Now we'll start with the ignition coil. The ignition coil is the voltage source for the, for the electronic ignition system. It takes 12 volts of electricity, and it converts it into around 20 to 50,000 volts with a really low amperage. Now, 50,000 volts is enough voltage to jump this really small gap. If you look right here, there's an air gap in there. So when this ignition system is firing, there's going to be a blue spark between those two terminals there. I, I can even demonstrate that over here on a vehicle. Once we'll start it up with a plug wire off, we'll connect the spark plug. We'll show you what a spark looks like. Um, so the, the way a coil works, the electricity is switched on and off at a rapid pace to this coil. It's two coils of wire, one outside, one on the inside, one being low voltage, one being high voltage. When the power is applied, the magnetic field builds around the coil, and then when the, when the power is shut off, that's when the high voltage spark is created. That spark is transmitted from the coil. In this vehicle, it, it transmits through a small carbon piece right here directly into the rotor through the rotor, then through the distributor cap. Now on the end of this distributor cap, we would have a spark plug wire that connects to a spark plug that's threaded into the combustion chamber. 
we'll walk over here to the Mustang and I'll show you what a spark plug wire looks like. This uses a different style ignition system, but it's still using a spark plug wire. So this is the spark plug wire here. A conductor plugs into a coil directly. And on the other end of this spark plug wire, over here, we have the spark plugs. They're gonna be right down there, if you can see where I'm pointing. That Underneath this spark plug wire is a spark plug, which we've demonstrated over there. Now this vehicle, it doesn't use a distributor. It's called a distributorless ignition system. It uses a crankshaft position sensor to know the relationship of which cylinder it needs to fire. And it has, a, this is a coil pack. This coil pack has six separate, this is a six cylinder engine, so it has six separate ignition coils built in here. Each one of them fires individually. So we have a coil firing through a wire and it goes down to the spark plug. These are all numbered in the four, five, and six are on this side. One, two, and three are on this side. The coil is also labeled up here with a sticker. If ever you have to change your wires, you don't know where they go, typically this will always be labeled on the coil. Um, again, this uh, coil works the same way as I described earlier, except on this vehicle there's a separate coil for each cylinder. This is an early distributorless ignition system. Next we're going to go over to 2006. Scion XB. This vehicle was donated or <laughs> was loaned to us by Myrex Marketing for purposes of making this video. Now this vehicle, it has a more modern ignition system. What they've done is they've eliminated a lot of components. They've recognized now that by putting the ignition coil directly on top of the spark plug, we can eliminate a ignition rotor, a distributor cap, the distributor itself, the spark plug, plug wire, but these are all components that in time would need to be changed for a tune-up or for an ignition misfire. On this vehicle, we have a ignition coil directly bolted to the top of the spark plug. So this is going to be an ignition coil. This is a four-cylinder engine. It has four separate coils. Again, we can just take one bolt out, remove that ignition coil. A spark plug goes in the end of this here, and way down in this hole is a spark plug. I'll refer back to this. We have a spark plug. It doesn't look like this. This spark plug is actually out of a, a Ford 5.4 Triton. It's a unique spark plug, but it's the only one I had available uh, it, to show as a demonstration. Now, down inside this hole, there's a spark plug. It looks like that. It plugs into the coil directly. So you can see we've eliminated a lot of wiring and a lot of potential faults, as well as now we're going to have direct voltage straight to the spark plug. This is the most efficient system. This is what almost all modern vehicles today use for, an, for the ignition system. Again, the ignition system is used to ignite the air fuel mixture inside the cylinder or combustion chamber of the engine. The end of this goes straight into the cylinder of the engine and there's going to be a spark right here. We'll, we'll go back over to the Mustang. I'm going to disconnect the spark plug wire. I'm going to start the engine with the wire disconnected and we'll, we'll be able to demonstrate to you what a spark looks like and how the system works. As well as you can appreciate how rapidly the ignition system is firing all these uh, spark plugs and how fast the engine is running. It's really amazing just at idle speed. You're going to notice that since I have a plug wire disconnected, the engine's probably going to shake and it may, it may even stall when I initially start it up. I'm going to shut this light off because it's going to be easier to see the spark with the light off. Clear? Mm -hmm. Now, as you can see, there's a really small blue spark that's extremely hot and that's what's used to ignite the air fuel mixture inside the engine while the engine is under full compression. And if you were to accidentally touch that, it would, uh, it won't hurt you, but it will make you jump and you will not enjoy it. So I don't recommend touching the spark plug wires or any part of the ignition system with the key on because I've done it and, uh, well, it's not very pleasant. It's like being electrocuted. Then again, the ignition system doesn't produce enough voltage to harm you. Okay, I'm going to shut the car off because it's coming in, but it's 
spark plug disconnected is, is bad for the engine and the catalytic converters. Uh, a few moments that we did, it doesn't hurt anything. Hi, my name is Rex Kimball. I'm with MyRxMarketing.com. We are helping Crawford's Auto Repair to make these videos. Uh, as part of the lesson on the electric system and the ignition system, we're going to show you how to jump start a dead vehicle. So on my right, we have a 2006 Scion XB. This is provided by Myrix Marketing. Advertising space is available on this vehicle for advertising any product or service in the Phoenix area. Go to MyRixMarketing.com for details. That's M-I-R-E-X Marketing.com. On my left, we have a 1997 Ford Mustang. We're going to pretend that the Scion has the dead battery and that the Mustang has the live battery. So, uh, I don't know about most people, but with me, uh, I think the biggest thing to remember, or the hardest thing to remember, is the correct order uh, when you're jump starting a vehicle, the correct order of attaching the cables. You want to be careful when you're attaching the cables because you're essentially creating a live electrical circuit. So, when you have the jumper cables disconnected, the trick that Jeff showed me is to clamp the cable onto itself so that you know they won't touch each other when you attach it to a live or dead battery. Now the correct order, some, a saying that I have to remember the order is uh, first connect the dead red Fred. So you connect positive and then negative on the dead battery and then you connect positive and then negative on the live battery. So first connect the dead red Fred. Here you can see the red terminal and black terminal. You connect your red cable generally to the red uh, terminal on the battery it's not always the case that the positive terminal is red on the battery so if you need to the battery will always be marked and I can see here that there's a plus sign the light probably isn't that great for the video but anyway you go dead battery first red black so first connect the dead red Fred and then you have the negative Okay. Now, if these are to touch, it would create a spark. It could be dangerous. But since I had them separated here, I know they wouldn't. I'm going to let it go. So you always connect the red first. So now we're on the live battery, positive. And then this can go to the negative terminal or something metal. OK. So now we've created a complete circuit. And what we would do is we would start this vehicle and let it run for a couple minutes and that helps to charge this battery. Let it run for about five minutes. Generally a battery can uh, run out when, when you use electrical parts of the vehicle uh, without running the engine. The battery is meant to be recharged by the alternator as Jeff explained and uh, if, if you uh, use things like the radio or your dome light, it can run the battery out. So we're not going to actually start the vehicle, but let's pretend that we've left it running uh, for about five minutes. We were able to start this vehicle, and now we're going to disconnect the cables. So the order is, first, disconnect the jumped black jack. So you do the reverse order for disconnecting. You do black and then red. Start with the jumped battery and then end with the live battery. So, first disconnect the jumped jack black and the red. I'm going to attach it to the cable here so I don't create a live, live circuit. And then disconnect black and red. So, again the order is uh, First connect the dead red Fred. Red, black on the dead battery. Red, black on the live battery. Run the engine for five minutes or so. Start the dead battery. 
First, disconnect the jumped jack, the jumped black jack. Black red on the jumped battery, black red on the live battery. And that's how you jump start regular gasoline vehicles. Now, if you have a diesel vehicle and you've run the battery out, then you can't actually, you can't use a regular gasoline to jump start a diesel vehicle. Generally, if you have a diesel vehicle and you uh, run the battery out, it's best to have it towed to a shop where they can uh, recharge the battery or change the battery correctly. Uh, if you can try to jump start a hybrid vehicle, but if it's the high voltage battery that's, that's dead in the hybrid vehicle, then you're not going to be able to charge it with the regular gasoline vehicle. So uh, there are some special steps and uh, safety issues involved with diesel and, and hybrid vehicles. So um, most people drive regular gasoline still and that's the process that you use and that's how you jump start a vehicle. Hey, well, thank you for watching this video on the ignition system and the electrical system of the vehicle. For more videos, you can go to my website at www.crawfordsautoservice.com. There are lots of videos as well as uh, more information on re repairing your vehicle and inspecting different systems of the vehicle. Thank you for watching again. Have a great day.